everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are going to cover our album, which is Notre V. Um, and this is the the um, pattern that I chose. It's from the 12 by 12. Hold on. I got to double check. Um, the 12 by 12 collection pack. Um, I'm using the 12 by 12 collection pack, the pattern pack, the A4, 4 by 4, and uh, 6 by 6. Sorry, six by six and eight by eight. So this one's from the collection pack. Um, and then uh, this is from the patterns pack. And this is actually the cover sheet. And I just trimmed off these actually pins. Um, and that's going to go on the spine. And then I'm going to flip it over. And this is what's going to go on the back. And you can see these go together nicely. So let's go ahead and get these in. <clears throat> and I'm going to further embellish the cover, but I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. These flowers are really pretty, but they're very small, so um, i got to work on my scale a little bit. And there is some noise in the background from the darned old air conditioner, but I am going to try to edit out as much as I can. It's very hot and humid here in California, which um, we don't have tolerance for because it's not it's not humid here normally. Okay, so there we go. Isn't this pretty? I just love this. It looks so French. <laughs> I guess we're Italian. Either one. Okay, now we're going to put the uh, pins here on the side. I think uh, I think I'm going to go this way. It's really just a matter of preference. No, it's not. I'm going to go the other way. There's some words on it, and I'm going to go the orientation of the uh, the lettering. You can see right here in the back. I did ink my edges with mahogany. Okay, and then here's our back. <clears throat> Oops, that's too high. Okay, that looks just right. Okay, that's it for now. I'm going to go get some more papers together, and then we will work on the inside liners. And uh, once I get the liners in, I'll go ahead and embellish uh, the cover, make my decisions there. But for now, that's uh, the papers that we're using. So again, this is from the collection pack. This is from the patterns pack. Um, both of those uh, are 12 by 12s. Be back soon. Okay, everyone, let's go ahead and finish the inside liners. So I've chosen these two patterns, which are from the pattern pack. Both of these are from the pattern pack. Think about that for a second. So I'm going to piece these together like so. I'm going to put the flowers on the bottom, this on the top, and then I'm going to use these fountain pens as sort of um, a break point between the two. And I just think that looks really pretty. I love fountain pens. They're also on our spine, if you recall. So I'm sort of bringing that theme back in. You can orient them any way you want. I kind of want them pointing toward the spine. I like the way that looks. Now I 
and have gone back and forth about whether or not to make this a pocket or to just um, install it flat as a large photo mat space and kind of going back and forth. And I think I'm just going to install it flat as a photo mat. But this is a very easy place to go ahead and put a pocket. And the way you would want to measure that uh, for this piece, this is four inches, is you would want to make it uh, four, the cream cardstock would be four and five eighths. Four and five eighths, you would score a half inch on the four and five eighths side. That would leave you with your 16th inch border all the way around it. And then the width would be nine, I have to think about this, nine and a half, nine and five eighths, nine and five eighths. And then you would score a half inch on either side or half inch on three of the four sides. And then that would make a pocket that fits just perfect here. Before you glue it down, test it, make sure it's not in the hinge area. If it is, take a, a 16th or an 18th inch off your, your pocket size. But I'm going to go ahead and glue it down. But that is an easy um, modification to make. Or, you know, it doesn't even have to be that sophisticated. You can just take, um, mat this, and then just glue three of the four sides down if you want. Sometimes I do that if I want to stash goodies in the pockets like cut aparts that I didn't use in the album to be used when you're actually placing your photos. So there are lots of cut aparts left over from this project, but I'm opting not to do that because most of the cut aparts are smaller, shorter than um, this pocket would be, and they would just be too hard to get out. But if you put everything in an envelope and then stuffed it in there, it would work fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and I've done this before, is I'm actually going to tape these two pieces together first and then apply them as, you know, a whole. And you can use double-sided tape. I'm just going to use some scotch tape to hold it together, and then I'll put glue on the whole thing, including the scotch tape to hold it all together. So to come up with this, um, I did a four inch high. This is eight and three eighths. And then I just measured this by laying it on to the cover and coming up with the right dimension. And I'll tell you what it is, but you'll want to lay this in and check it yourself. And it wound up being four, four and three eighths, and this is four. Okay, and then together that gives you a height of eight and three eighths and a width of eight and three eighths, which is just perfect for an eight and a half inch square cover. Okay, that's it. Let's get some glue on it. Just double checking the fit. Make sure you get these two little corners. I didn't put tape all the way to the edge. That's my dog, Nala, chatting, putting pressure on me to hurry up. We're just about at a breaking point. Yeah. Not right now, Nala. I need a few more minutes. And then I will have this in the can, so to speak. Okay. Be careful. Sometimes when you're using the tape, it wants to fold over on itself, so be careful. I've had that happen. It seems to be especially problematic when I'm using the double-sided tape, which is very hard to get apart. But once you have glue on it, that's kind of a, a whole new set of problems. Okay, there we go. Now I've gone back and forth about whether or not to cardstock back this before I put it down, and I kind of like it the way it is. Um, so I am, I don't really want that um, cream border, but I am gonna ink my edges a little more heavily just so it pops out a little bit better. And creates that, the look of dimension. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we're just gonna glue this right on top of our seam and it'll soften that all up. And then also pull the um, theme from the spine back into the book creating um, a nice flow, cohesion. There we go, what do you guys think? I like it. I'm gonna check my measurements real quick and see 
That's four. Oops, I'm not right. That's right at four inches. And that's right at four inches. So it's just checking this line against the top and it's in straight, which is kind of a small miracle, but it worked out. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna take these two pieces together. Oops, I hit my volume on the computer. All right, tape. There we go. We'll get our glue on. I think we're finally getting a cool break in the weather. Um, it's nearly 10 a.m. and the air's not on yet, <laughs> which is nice. It's been a real challenge to try to get anything done because my air needs to run. So I was I met with Julie last night, and the next album is going to be Aesop's Tables, and I know that's been wildly popular with you guys. So that'll be my next project. I'll be starting that today is June twenty fourth. I'll be starting that Monday. And I had a request on Facebook to do um, the top down pocket instead of the side pocket. So I'm gonna see if I can't incorporate that into the design as well. I have to look at the paper first and look at the orientation of the patterns before I make a decision. But um, yeah, I think I'm gonna be doing that as well. So if you guys have specific requests for sizes, um, number of pages, uh, orientations, landscape, portrait, um, leave it or a box um, or folios, whatever, leave it over on Facebook or send us an email uh, to contact at Scrap and Create and I will do what I can to accommodate you if I haven't already done something like that. And if I have, I'll try to point you to um, any finished projects that I have that meet the specifications that you're asking for. Sound good? Okay, great. I can't wait to hear from you guys. And it's hard to always be the one coming up with the ideas. So it would be helpful to hear from you because I definitely want to build what you guys are interested in watching and building for yourself. Okay, now I am gonna check this. I, I don't think lightning will strike twice, so I'm going to measure this one a little bit more carefully before I burnish it into place. Just under four. There we go. Okay, looks lovely. That's it for the covers. Now we're ready to add our pages. And here are the pages. And I've already sequenced them, but I'm gonna go over it with you real quick so you can get yours in order. So this is page one, page two, and then page three has the birds. Page four, five, so your greens should be facing the spine. Page six, page seven, and there's our page eight. Okay, so let's go ahead and get, actually, sorry, I keep touching my computer. I just need to move it out of the way. I'm gonna go in backwards, so I'm gonna start with page eight. If you have trouble slipping, um, your page over the spine. I like it nice and tight because I don't want my page to travel up and down. As it is, I'm tr I worry about how it's torqued. I don't want to have to also worry about how, if it's too high or too low. So I keep my hinge very tight to the page. If you have trouble getting it in, one of the things that I've found that will ease that is sometimes if you just open your flaps because sometimes the flaps can be creating some extra tension on the paper um, that will be relieved if you open up your flaps. And when I say paper, I mean on the pocket page. And this particular pocket page feels quite tight for some reason.
There we go. I'm going to close my flaps. Okay, so there is page. You're looking at page seven, the back side's page eight. Okay, now I'm going to use my pick tool to reach in and grab my tape, the backing. you tug it at an angle, um, it should come right off. Okay. Looks pretty good. So I'm pulling toward myself. They're less likely to tear. Seven, so that's page five. not talking about it but I am looking at the top and bottom of each page that I install and looking for an even border with the cover. If it's off you can tweak your page, kind of torque it uh, to straighten it out. So there's a couple of things that might make that happen. One is your pocket page, for whatever reason, is not square. That's usually the least likely thing. The other thing is, and this is the what happens most of the time, is your hinge didn't go in straight. Um, and that's fine. You can accommodate it by torquing your page slightly to make the pages appear straight, and, and then it won't be, you won't notice the difference at the spine side but you don't want to open your book and have your pages drifting down or up. So what we're looking for is that nice even border, goes in this way, around um, your page. And that it's lined up with the page that it's next to. See how these are all lining up? There will be some variants and that's because it, some will have hinges on the outside, some will have hinges on the top, and that will throw that off slightly. Not much. When I first started making albums, I didn't know how to do this part. And I actually took the tape off first and then tried to get the pocket page on. Needless to say, that was a nightmare. <laughs> you can't do that. I wound up having to put glue on it and then it would slide over. But I really, I don't, it, even if you use glue, I would recommend using tape anyway because the glue or the tape, the glue over time, although I haven't had this problem with art glitter, but glue over time does, I think, dry out because it has a water element to it. So at some point, you know, glue will get drier and potentially crack, and that won't happen with your tape. So I would recommend if you're going to use glue on your hinge, tape first, glue second. And 
And my other rule of thumb in general is if it's an interactive component, like a hinge or a flap, use tape. If it is static, like a mat, glue. Mm. You're not gonna wear it out because it's on a flat surface, it's not moving. So the likelihood that the glue will crack from use is almost non-existent. This isn't gonna crack because it's not moving, it's on a flat substrate. Hopefully that all makes sense. Okay, so that's all done. So I wanna share with you what I decided to do for um, the inserts. I added an inch and a half strip on each one of these to create um, this sort of uniform look as it cascades down. I like this. I, 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 I think it came from the, <laughs> from the A4. Um, but I do think this pattern is in a couple of the packs and the scale is the only thing that changes. Like, see how large that scale is? But I think it's really pretty. I love fountain pens. And then I think we get this nice, beautiful, uniform cascade. You don't have to do that. Each one could be unique. This is just my design, design um, preference. And I like this aesthetic. I think it creates uh, sort of flow throughout the, the whole album. And my albums, I, at least my mini albums, I like for the whole thing to have some what they call gestalt. So you see the how it all flows together. The other method um, that some people use, which is um, typically used in a traditional scrapbook, is you know these the two opposing pages go together and then you might have a whole new theme for the next one. And that's what you see in traditional um, 12 by 12, or you may have two, maybe four pages that are a theme, like Christmas or Thanksgiving, and then it'll be the next holiday kind of thing, New Year's. So it's uh, two different ways to sort of construct your albums by themes. Um, I think many albums lend themselves to this type of strategy, but you could certainly have, you know, New Year's here, then April or Easter here, and, you know, 4th of July, Memorial Day, whatever. So you could, especially if you had um, six pages, you know, do more of a calendar thing. So anyways, that's it for the Notre V. Um, this is so beautiful. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm really struggling with um, enhancing this further than what it is. I just love it. I am definitely going to add some filigree corners, but um, the scale of the flowers is so small. I don't really have anything suitable. I tried a couple of things. I did not like it. It just overwhelmed the picture. I may do something um, to make the, ooh, excuse me, the windows pop, <clears throat> like putting a glaze on it, but I'm not sure. So um, I'll talk about that in the walkthrough, but for now, I'm going to leave this as is, give it some more thought, and um, I may come up with something. And if I do, I'll go over in detail what it is and uh, make sure that if I use any more elements here, that they are outlined in uh, the material list, which is always in the description of the video. So if you go to the description of the video by clicking show more, you'll see the material list followed by the cut list for this album. And again, I mentioned it before and I'll mention it again. This is a beautiful, simple album suitable for any beginner. Um, so if you've been waiting to jump in, this is a great album uh, to do that with. Even if you decide to use different paper, typically the first, and in this case, they're very, very quick. Usually the first six to 15 minutes of each page video just does the interactive elements. Then you could decorate it any way you want. The following part of the video is me actually um, adding the designer elements. So like I said, if you wanna jump in and, and try this, this is a good album to get started with. Okay, I am for sure going to do some embellishing on the back because it is so simple and I'll cover that in the walkthrough as well. Um, it will be something that's relatively flat because the book rests on its back and it'll be cut apart from one of the collection packs so it's not going to be flowers or anything that has too much dimension on it and then i'm going to leave this as is because i don't really want to add charms to this and take away from the fountain pens themselves okay so like i said if i decide to do anything else here i'll make sure i cover that in detail in the walkthrough thanks everybody for tuning in if you're not a subscriber click that subscription Click on the bell and you'll be notified every time we have new content. 
We appreciate you guys taking time to watch our videos and leaving comments is very helpful, especially if there's something you'd like to see. I want to design these albums to serve this community. So if there's something you're interested in seeing, let me know. The papers that we carry are Chow Bella, Stamperia, and Graphic 45. So if there's anything in those that you want to see, or if there's a particular size orientation or style, like folio over an album, different number of pages, let me know and I'll see what I can do to accommodate your request. Thanks for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrapping Create. See you soon.